everybody, Logan ISL here, and welcome to the final part of the Beginner's Guide. So, today we're going to be going ahead and, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish the Beginner's Guide. So today we're going to be going ahead and doing part 3 of the Beginner's Guide, which will be how to get to rank 5. And I just want to go ahead and finally go ahead and give the final results of what's going to be happening to this Beginner's Guide. Because there's a lot going on right now. Because for those of you who have watched the two update videos I did, which are now privated, and will remain so, basically what's going on is the JTO staff team are going back to previous areas of the game and repositioning towers on the difficulty chart. And this means there are towers that are moving. And um, about not that long ago, Ring 1 and Forgotten Ridge had their um, results finished, and so therefore, they got moved around. And fortunately, so far, in terms of the Ring 1 Forgotten Ridge results, Beginner's Guide's fine. And you can still use it to progress, which is good, and I'm very happy about that. But um, Ring 2 might cause some issues, but nonetheless, if you're watching this part, you should be fine because... Well, today we're going to be getting to Ring 5, and I feel like nothing in particular I'm going to be showing here is a necessary um, of a danger of moving. Are them potentially, like, IC, but that really doesn't matter. But you get the point here. Basically, this video, you should be fine, and you should be all good to go. So, yeah. Just one thing I'm going to note is one of the changes that are in this video was um, Tower Stress. Basically, um, Tower Stress was moved on to Difficult, it is no longer challenging, so just be warned whenever I talk about Tower of Stress in this guide, it is now Difficult. So, do be aware, however, it is still completely impossible to be able to get access to Ring 5 using the Beginner's Guide right now. The only part of the guide I think that's really in danger is Part 2, and that depends if Cold Hands gets moved down to Hard, but if that happens, I'm going to remake that part. So. What's going to be happening with the Beginner's Guide now? Because for those of you who watched those update videos, you know how I was saying that I was going to go ahead and redo them again. The thing is, I'm going to be honest and say I'm not very happy about the Beginner's Guide. And there are definitely quite a few flaws and issues with it that I wish I could fix and address. But unfortunately, I don't have the time to go back and redo these videos again. I simply have too much going on that I really can't do it. So unfortunately, even though I may, I do really want to redo this again, these videos are going to remain open and everything's going to be completely as it was. Because, like I said, I have no idea on um, what these features are going to be like. And plus, I don't have the time to go back and redo the guide again. So, for those of you who love this series, the videos are safe. They're going to stay here. And the beginner's guide is going to be completely back to normal. Everything is going to be alright. And, well, if you notice anything in this video, like this difficulty chart behind me, or anything that has changed because of the difficulty poll results, I'll have a pinned comment in the other two uh, videos of the Beginner's Guide talking about it. So, well, Beginner's Guide is um, pretty much done now that we got to Ring 5, but there's still going to be three more videos of the Beginner's Guide detailing what to do as your first intense, remorseless, and soul-crushing tower as well as um, what to do going on from there. So, there's still more videos to be made, although there won't be for, that won't be for a little while. At least I can safely assure you that the Beginner's Guide is safe, so. Thank you all very much for the support during this Beginner's Guide. Good luck to everybody trying to get to Ring 5. It is now time to start the video. Alrighty, we're in the Ring Select. Remember the first episode where I discussed you some secrets? Well, this is a secret that could potentially happen and we got a little bit lucky where we have the um, rare expectations. You can find this out by either being able to click this or the tower difficulty particles being rainbow. If you click this, the sound will play and you'll get a badge. So that's something cool that can happen. And then it just disappears. So, the good news is of course, in the last episode, we got ourselves ring three, which is really good. This is the easiest area in the game. Every tower except the soul crushing one, as you can see here, is from easy to difficult. The Citadel that is planned for Ring 3 is also intense. 
So that's also really going to be proving helpful, but you'll no need to really worry about that. And getting to Ring 4 will be a breeze. Even though we will need to beat six more towers, we already have the difficulty requirements. So it won't be that big and should prove no problem. Getting to Ring 5, however, is a problem. You'll need to beat your first challenging tower. Which, as painful as it sounds, actually won't be as hard as you may think, but trust me. But, you'll be need to be a lot more towers to access this area. Essentially, in this episode, we're going to over double our tower count. While that may seem daunting, it's not going to prove as tricky as you may think it is. So, let's head into Ring 3 and get this party started. Alrighty, we are here in Ring 3. So, it, I'm sure you probably already took a look at this if you made it here last episode. But basically, this area is a little different. You have to go ahead and head into this um, towers area before you even really do much. Ring 3 is the first area that you may notice. It's usually pretty dead here. This is a smaller server, but typically there isn't too many people here. It's really a um, forgotten area. As you go further down the game, you're really not going to have many people around because it's really hard to get further down. So you won't have many people joining you. But this is Ring 3. As you can see, here's the difficulty chart, and this looks way easier, and it is, compared to any other of the previous rings. So... That is some great stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get this party started. I'm gonna first start with Funny Thoughts. This is by Itnir. Now, remember in this, uh, be uh, the beginning of the intro, I should say, that I was going to go ahead and challenge you to become more independent? This is where I will challenge you. I'm not gonna tell you anything inside of this tower, because everything should be pretty simple. Especially when you've gotten here, you've beaten a multiple difficult towers, so this should prove to be a breeze. This will be great for you to see how far you've gotten. And so yeah, I'm gonna try and challenge you to see if you don't need any help inside of Funny Thoughts. So, of course, if you need help, the video will always be in the description if you need it, but for me, I gotta go ahead and beat this easy tower. Alright, I was an idiot and um, forgot I paused the recording, but I mean funny thoughts, but um, eight outside might suck, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, that could easily cause an issue, but other than that, that tower is really easy. So let's head on to um, inverted colors. I'm going to share you a, a tip for this tower and then um, show you how to do a jump that is like absolutely garbage. Okay, let me give you a tip here. When you get to this part, you only want to get go to here. That's all you need to do. Do not do this entire section. I don't know what this part is for, or like what's its purpose, but if you stand on this part, you will be fine. You do not need to do this entire section. If you do, all it's gonna do is heavily confuse you. So just sit here and you'll make it to the other side and be able to continue no problem see you you don't need to do any of that you just literally need to go to there you'll be fine so do not waste your time on that section and like fall outside or do something terrible all right what's well, when you head into floor seven here and it turns blue be careful because right at the beginning of this floor there is a really garbage jump. This one. So you might try and go for it, but what's going to happen is you're going to hit your head on this, and you're not going to. You're just going to fall down far. What you need to do is you need to wrap around like that. That's literally what you have to do. You cannot go forward. If you do, you will fall. So go in like that, grab it from the side, and you'll be able to progress through this jump. You probably are going to screw it up a couple times, but. Yeah, it, it's a dumb jump that was not tested properly. So, yeah, that's why this tower is rated medium, is because of that jump. 
being uh, really sucky. But from here on out, the tower is really easy. So, pretty much we'll just say GG to you at this point. I'm gonna warn you, on 410, there is a song that if you get way better at this game and attempt harder towers, you are going to have some immense PTSD of it. <laughs> so whenever I hear this song, I'm like, oh, that garbage tower. <laughs> but nonetheless, Inverted Colors is not that hard at all, it's just that one sucky jump and that one trick you might want to learn, and well, that's really easy, it's really all you need to worry about. Let's head in and uh, continue on here. Alright, so that's the easy stuff down. Now we're going to head into some trickier territory, into Deep Sighing. Now, Deep Sighing does have some funny traps in it, so I'm going to go ahead and um, recommend to you guys, before you watch this, or but not before you watch this, before you attempt this, to go ahead and uh, watch through this so you at least know where the trap locations are, even though if you don't memorize them, you might be able to catch them with your eye in a legit run when you see that section, so. Be warned though, this tower has tons of kill bricks. So keep an eye on your health when you're attempting this tower. It will absolutely hurt you. Oh, there we go. That's one part there. Th those falling platforms at um, three. Right in the beginning of the three, there's some falling platforms that are not indicated. That um, can prove to you to be very funny. So keep a lookout. Oh, keep an eye out for those. Oh, this part. That's right. Random conveyors. The beginning of four. Jeez. Also, wait a minute. This is five. Okay. So, beginning of five. They, those are very funny. So. Oh yeah, and that tilts as well. And those are falling. <laughs> and those fall as well. Jeez, I don't remember this tower having that many trolls in it. These are conveyors into kill bricks here in the middle of nine. And you gotta be careful because you're gonna have to transition onto a con from that conveyor to there, and that might cause issues and yeah, if you mess up that jump, you're falling pretty far down, but that's like around halfway through 9, so... Alright, now on 10, you have to be careful, because this tower does have wraparounds that are like half transparent, and this floor uses transparent stuff everywhere. So, you probably are gonna have some issues on this floor, especially this part here, even for me. This part sucks. Use... You can see solid parts on the top, use that to your advantage. And once you've done that, as long as you don't do anything dumb, that's deep sighing, so. Yeah, that tower does have some really weird parts. Definitely challenge you to sight read that. Go ahead and try and sight read it. If you can sight read that, that's a pretty hard tower to do that, so. Good job if you manage to pull it off. But yeah, that tower is pretty hard. I challenge you to um, sight read everything else. You know where the traps are. And, uh, well, <laughs> we're going into Ancient Trickery next, which is harder than Deep Sighing, apparently. I don't know about that, but... Overall, this shouldn't be that hard. But for those of you who... Um... But yeah, if you're new to this channel and have been using these beginner guides, I actually have been playing the game since the very beginning. And I remember when this came out into Ring 3. This was like considered like the coolest tower ever made, but nowadays this is like you're not gonna get in if you submit this nowadays, it would be considered bad. S standards have definitely changed, but I do have multiple videos about the history of the game and stuff, if you're- if you, um, are interested on that. Have like a- I have a video about what the game was like before the ring system existed and stuff, so. If you like that type of stuff, feel free to watch that. There, this game does have a little bit of an interesting history that not many people may, may uh, know. Ah, this part. 
This part sucks. So basically, they, this is a whole bunch of kill bricks that will barrage you to death. And these white outlines are a healing spot where you can sit and heal. Now, if you're lucky, you can get into a laggy server where you can just go ahead and walk right through here. But this server is not laggy, so I'm able to just go ahead and, and uh, die here. This is something that is really annoying. It's like the one part of this tower that absolutely sucks. So, yeah. Unfortunately, you have to sit through here. Now, in these parts, there's little holes where you can lose your progress. So, be very careful. And, um, for those of you who are curious about history, this had something special done to it. This Slamo. This is, um, a character actually called Slamo, and it's pretty controversial in this community. I have a whole video on that. But this part can get a little bit confusing. You just go on the broom, or broom, some, whatever you want to call it there. And you'll be able to make it through just fine. Now, there are a couple parts in this floor, and I believe that might have been one of them, where they are just randomly are a conveyor. But they are pretty weak, so you won't need to worry about them too much. But, yep, there, you, there they are. You just saw them there. Don't need to really worry about them. This part is safety netted anyway. Alright, once you have done that, you have this final section. Just lean to the side when these holes show up. Don't fall in on accident. And you'll be able to go ahead and head up here. And this is the rest of the tower. It's fairly simple. Oh, random conveyor part. Yeah, be careful. This section here has random conveyors on it. That section might prove a little bit difficult to you guys, but if you did um, overcoming hatred without skips, that won't be any problem. But if you did overcoming hatred with skips like you should, then... Um, yeah, that part might be a problem, which is good because you did overcoming hatred the right way, so kudos to you. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. That is probably one of the best jokes I have ever done. All right, <laughs> that's really funny. I am not mad. I just find that so funny. Probably should have said this earlier, but throughout this tower, there are longer jumps. Use shift lock to your advantage, like this. This will make these jumps way easier. So if you've been doing them in some odd, aw awkward way, this might prove to be easier for you, but um, let's not do what I did like, last time and um, actually hit the wind pad here. There we go. Ancient trickery. So there we go. We've beaten four towers inside of ring three. And all four of those should have been pretty easy. If you suffered on deep sighing, I completely understand. That is something I understand. That tower might cause some suffering, but Ancient Trickery is pretty simple for difficulty tag it has. So, we're going, even though this is like a low mid hard, these to three towers, I'm just going to say, they suck and you're not going to have fun with them. So, I'm not going to make you do these. We're going to go ahead and, um,. Well, um, we're gonna go ahead and go back to Forgotten Ridge again, so let's go ahead and head over there. Now, remember, since we visit Forgotten Ridge, if you remember from the first episode, we don't have to go ahead and do that path in Ring 1. We can simply click the orb, and we will teleport right to the Forgotten Ridge. So, make sure you remember that. Alrighty, so here's what the difficulty chart looks like. We've only beaten two things in the Forgotten Ridge which was SOMD and SOLW, and that was to give us our fourth tower point to unlock Ring 2. So, clearly we need to go ahead and do some um, patching up, but I'm going to go ahead and um, start with Jolly Good Fun. 
So that's an easy difficulty tower. It's a little long, but it really should not prove to have any issue with you. It shouldn't cause any problems, so. This tower's most advanced mechanic is it uses the same thing, like odd mechanism, that um, Meaningless Decisions uses. So, yeah, I just do want to note about that. That might confuse you. That might confuse you. <laughs> when it gets to the red floor, you need to touch this in order to be able to get to here, so... That's probably the one thing I'm actually going to go ahead and say about this entire tower, is that you might get confused there. Alright, now when he gets to the top here, do not do what I do, did in my Forgotten Rich stream and fell all the way down here. And, um, actually hit the wind pad, which is something I didn't do, but... Alright, that's jolly good fun. Now you need one more point left in order to unlock ring four. So, here's the thing. I'm sure there's some GG's, yep. Uh-oh, somebody saw the... someone knows. Anyway, um... <laughs> I know it's like, oh, you just go ahead and do these two. Here's the thing, right? Before I let you go, I want to go ahead and increase your skill level one last time. This is going to be, like, my last time to ever go ahead and, like, kind of push you to go ahead and increase your skill. Well, go ahead and be back here later, trust me. But we need to go ahead and push your skill a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and do immense ire. Now, you might be going, well, why not then do TOV? We're going to save versatility for later. Versatility is a longer tower, and... That is going to cause a lot more pain than Immense Ire, and um, Immense Ire is pretty short. It's not that long of a tower, so... Might not have too many issues with it, and then I just realized this is not where Immense Ire is. It's back by the Intermediate... I'm so dumb. Alright, here it is in the Intermediate section. It's by Will Sickenwills. Good luck trying to say that name ten times fast. But this tower is, like, mid-high difficult on the chart, so this will be your new hardest. So, I kind of- might have kind of lied where I said, um, you going to ring four is going to be a breeze, but compared to last episode, this ring unlock should be a breeze. <laughs> Immense Ire is a very short tower, but definitely packs quite a bit of a punch. So, do take note of that. This tower is going to probably be a little bit difficult for you. Watch out, those are tilting platforms. So, this one I'm actually going to thoroughly help you through. But, the beginning of this tower though, it's very chill. But, yeah. Don't get confused when you get to here. Just go ahead and do that, lol. Okay, so here's one of the gimmicks in the tower. It'll say, be careful. If you notice a part that's less transparent than another, that's a can call I false part, you don't want to touch it. So you wanna go on the part You wanna go on like these parts. And this spinner is a different speed than that one, so don't get confused. So this part's gonna be a little bit confusing. And you wanna land there. So yeah, that part might get a little bit confusing, but it won't be that bad. Now here you go on top. And here you have some conveyors. This is definitely gonna to touch up on your um conveyor skills so hope you're excited to mess with some conveyors because this tower has a couple of them alrighty when you get to here ignore that tightrope that's what I recommend you do just ignore it and you'll be able to progress through just fine and here I would just simply ignore the kill bricks as well yeah already that quick this is like two and a half minutes and we're on five Ah, now here, this pushing platform might cause issues. Look at my keyboard overlay. See how lightly I'm tapping dub forward here? And it's going up, so be careful. Tilt your camera quickly and get out. That's what I recommend you do there. That's going to cause some issues for you, likely. So, 
Just like Overcoming Hatred, that will shoot you very far up. Was not expecting that. Almost got me to get messed up as well. Now for that... Yeah, you just ram right through it. But don't go very fast. Slow down a little bit. Because it might push you off. So be careful. And that trust jump might be an issue. And oh no! Oh, this jump's gonna suck for you guys. For um, a Jato player like me, who has played this game way too much... This is a pretty common thing to see. It's uncommon, but... This is a momentum push box jump. Or pushing platform jump. What you do is you ram forward and you jump before this hits the end to try to land on the other side. So let me show you here. So you see how you're not really going to make it, but... Oh. <laughs> um... Okay, if you want, you can do that, but that might be a little tricky for you. But let me go ahead and show you how that jump is intended to be done. But that is definitely an option if you want to go ahead and um, do it that way. But, um, yeah, that, that's a little tricky. Oh, for crying out loud. Not surprised. That jump is really awkward. Alright, so... Let's not mess this up again, please. That might be better for you to do. So, you might trip up less if you do it that way, but do it in, for, in um, shift lock if you want. But just be careful. So what you're supposed to do is this. So see how I held W and then just launched off. I just pressed space and launched. So that's really tricky. So if you want to do the momentum jump, like you are supposed to do that. But if you can... Go ahead and just wrap off like I did on that, like I uh, did that one time there. Feel free to do that as well. Floor five is the first floor of this tower that's gonna prove to be a little annoying. So, and uh, going into floor six, make sure you land here, and um, don't try and get off early and get screwed. Now this is telling you to push slowly, and this is where you you do want to push slowly because this is gonna move around oddly. And you gotta try and nudge yourself there. So, that might take you some practice. And, oh, that's the thing that's also gonna be new for you. You can actually slide on top of trusses. Remember this from Toast? This is where you're gonna be um, doing it. So here, get to the top, and then just hold W and A, and you'll be able to come up. No problem. You won't have to worry about that, so. Yeah, this tower has some weird techniques that are gonna trip you up, but you'll definitely be... Um, a way better player coming out of this and it will make what we're gonna do next to be way less of a pain so yeah as painful as this tower might be it's definitely gonna help you a lot all right now be careful when you go onto this conveyor that you're not hitting that because that will tank your health so that is a little pro tip for you and once you've done that, you're on to 9. So, yeah, 5 and 6 have all the tricky and odd stuff with um, pushing platforms, but... Oh, this is um, falling platforms, man. Be careful. And then you have a floor 9 outside. I don't remember this being too tricky, but we'll see. Falling platform. Okay, for this, this is what I recommend you do. As soon as it's fully vertical... That's when you stand on it, and then you'll need to, like, kind of, like, as you saw, like, slowly pinch yourself there. Probably are gonna fail that, but... That will definitely help you with spinners, because... Boy, the stuff that towers do nowadays with spinners, Jesus, they can be very funny. Now, the, these block blocks, I bet you are can't collide true, are they? Yes, you can You can go in through them. So you can't go through them, so be careful. And welcome to floor 10. You're at the final two. Oh, this is final two. Okay, clearly I have my floor numbering all messed up. Okay, it doesn't matter. These fall. And you'll recognize this song from another tower that you played. This area there, as you just saw, I recommend you do first, third, fifth, and then get on the sixth and out. Now here is another tower of keyboard eating moment.
Yeah, that's going to be a little bit challenging. This tower overall is definitely going to be tricky. But... And it's going to be really hard, but you'll thank yourself for doing this. Okay. Yeah, go all the way up and then off. And then you go down here and then go down there. <laughs> this tower has random parts that could be really funny. Final floor, what do we got here? Be careful. Okay, so. You want to go on the left side, then into the middle here. This part of the tightrope you don't want to go on. You only want to go on these parts. So be careful. That wall you can go through. This you go through the middle. Yeah, be vi that is a really clever one with the truss there. And after that, you're good to go. Pretty much. After that final be careful part, you are not done actually. Okay, so this might confuse you. Just press that forward once and this will swing and that is all the momentum you will need. Those final blocks do go ahead and um, fall. And then you just have these final spinners and you beat immense ire. So this is your new hardest tower and boy oh boy was it tricky. And boom, just like that, you have ring 4 unlocked. But you can go ahead and check it out, but we're not going to go there just yet. We're actually going to go ahead and head back to Ring 1 because there is a way more important matter that we get to deal with. So, let's head there. I always love taking this back to Ring 1. It's rare that I'm able to go ahead and ride this. <laughs> I'm never really in Forgotten Ridge, so... It's always cool whenever I'm in this thing to go ahead and take a look at the rest of the area. Alright. So. You beat a pretty hard tower, I'm not going to lie. That was really hard. And I know many people are probably going to go, Okay, why did you make... Or um, experienced players are going to be like, Why do you make people go and do a man's tire? I genuinely think that tower is really helpful, and I think you're going to be much better at the game after you beat that, so. Alright, so now that you've done that very hard challenge, um, let's go ahead and ramp up the anti more. Yeah, it's time for you to beat your first challenging tower. <laughs> oh, I know I'm evil. Don't worry, though. I'm going to ease you into it. Take a look at the chart. Tower of um, Screen Punching, which is what we're going to do. Ignore this, I'll explain this in a little bit. Is a little bit higher. But the thing is, the only reason why this tower is even challenging is because of the last floor. And you can skip it entirely. Which literally makes this very easy. This will literally be easier than Immense Ire. I am not joking. So, let's go ahead and knock down your first challenging tower. So, welcome. <laughs> Welcome. So the beginning here is a little odd. Uh, you, you can go through multiple different routes and it gets really confusing really quickly. So let me go ahead and show you what I do. Most people will go this way, but typically I actually go this way. I don't know why I do. I just have this route. What I got used to this route when I first played this like nearly three years ago and I've just used it ever since, but... Going that way is probably faster. Do whatever you want. I get to this side, and now what I do is when I get to this block, I get a climbing animation up here, and these do fall, so be careful. But there's definitely easier ways to do this floor. In fact, the easiest way is to probably... In fact, this is actually the easiest way. Go this way. And you're able to just go ahead and climb straight up here. But that's the route I use. Definitely use that one. And then uh, go this way. <laughs> but yeah. There's a whole bunch of different routes. Find what you want to use. <laughs> now even though this tower is definitely easier than Immense Ire. Do not underestimate it. And that jump actually really sucks by the way. In fact. I'd actually recommend that you. Never mind. Ignore what I said. As I was saying before, I was an idiot, and I'm actually going to go ahead and take that the uh, good route now. 
is, um, I recommend that you do not underestimate this tower. Because even though this is definitely easier than Immense Ire, um, it still has some very hard parts in it. <laughs> there are parts that are tricky, so be careful. This tower is, even though we're going to make this way easier, it is not a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, be careful of that jump. That jump will probably cause you some issues, but once you get used to that, it won't be a problem. But welcome to floor three. Now, what the heck is this part? Something you can skip and... Wow, I am not doing good at all today. I just keep doing really dumb things. Alrighty. Now that you're on here, what you do is you go this way and then just go straight up. Yeah, that's actually intended. That's the intended route. Do not do the wraparounds. You will literally cry. So, there is a little bit of a hidden skip here. If you're brave enough, you can try and land on this and go to the other side, but... I mean, do it if you want, but this section is really easy, so it's nothing significant at all that that part skips. Nothing to write home. Now, for me in 2018, this part was really hard, so I don't know how it will be nowadays for you guys, but these four one studs fall. What I do is I hold space and then just traverse through them, just like that. That's the easiest way to do them. And now, you are on floor four. Be careful of that falling platform. Now, I'm actually going to recommend you do a skip here, because this will save you... Um, a bit of time with that lull section and it's really easy to see go right to there and yeah that's an, another intended skip highly recommend you do that now j just like in toast this is where the advanced techniques are getting to the point where you're gonna start seeing some of these advanced techniques is just get on the top like this and then just pull the right direction and you'll be through with no problem at all Careful with that, that can hit your head very easily. Alright, welcome to floor 5. That first jump might pr trip you up. This floor is a little confusing. I'm gonna be real with you. So, when you get to the end here, jump. Because the path just randomly ends, and even though you can walk to the other side, it is a little inconsistent. Now, get on top of this, which you, which, um, you can just do like that. And then get on top of this and head to the right. So that will go ahead and um, prevent all of the odd confusion you're probably that you may get. Be careful that jump is long. All right, and um, here this part might get you a little bit. You have to stand on these falling platforms for a little bit, which is going to be very wonky for you at first. All right, and after that you've made it to uh, four six, and this is where the tower. Um, really begins, and uh, this is where all the difficult parts come into play. So here, just be quick on those. Those spin, it's supposed to be a trap, but it really doesn't do anything with physics, so I don't understand the point in that. But here, climb on top, then go down. Don't do the 11 stud jumps, so... I mean, you can. I'm, I'm sure you're skilled enough to do it, but wouldn't recommend trying. Now here, you gotta be careful because of this falling platform. Your instinct is gonna tell you to jump, but that's actually gonna screw you over because this is a can collide true kill brick. You will hit your head and you'll get screwed. Make sure you're far away. Use alignment keys, whatever, and then just go ahead and hold and walk through. You need a lot of momentum there, because you need your character to be completely maxed out in speed. If you're like from here and walk in, your character for some reason has a lot of downward momentum that will push this down and you won't make it to the other side. So keep that in mind. And now for 6 outside. This is the only outside in the entire tower. And um, considering your tower effect skills, this part probably isn't going to be that hard. It's literally all 1 studs, which... Um, yeah, after doing tower effect, probably is going to be no problem. But I don't know how um, 
you guys fair. Yeah, be careful. That, that might trip you out. At this time, so... Now, when you try and go in here, go diagonal like that. That'll make life much easier. So here... Yeah, you have to go ahead and get on top of this, which is really hard. Now, what you do is you press space like this. You want to look toward the wall like this. And then, after a little bit, you climb up. See the keyboard overlay? And if you miss, this is why you do it this way. You miss. You typically don't have that happen, but... Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, I actually recommend you walk down that. Okay, once you've done that, you've made it to floor 7. Great job. Now, these four conveyors are really fast. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and explain. So, you want to face this wall. And um, be very careful. You'll, like, get to the edge here very quickly. And then, just tilt your camera very quickly, and then go boom. This conveyor will go down, and then you'll have these three conveyors push you into the wall. And then, this final edge here does not have a conveyor. Now this, do not touch the corners. If you do, there is a very funny conveyor. Now, that is what you do for here. And then, you just chill on this top part. Alright. So here, you're going to be able to have a chance, and I highly recommend you do this. This is a hard skip, but it skips a very awkward part of the tower. Get to the edge, and then just treat it like a long jump, and you'll be able to climb right up. So, do that again. Climb right up. So, please do that. It will make your life way easier. Now, welcome to 8. Okay, the beginning's a little weird, so let me explain. So I jump and then go into here, walk through that. I jump and then right before I'm about to go in, I kind of go ahead and like hold D. Yeah, hold, I, I'm doing D here, but then I hold W because this will push me back. So that is how you do this section. The beginning of this floor is awkward. The beginning of the, and the end of this floor is the weird part. Climb up onto this truss. Wait, what? Okay, I don't remember this part existing. But, um, yeah, I would not go this way because I'm pretty sure this is a trap. Yep, it's a trap. You would fall right through this. So, I, I wouldn't recommend you, um, do this, but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go in here, navigate through here, and climb up there. That's what you're supposed to do. And then you have this final part of A. Climbing up there is going to be a little wonky. You're going to hit your head for a couple jumps. And welcome to floor 9. This is the last floor of the tower. This is the only tower in the game that has 9 floors. And it was because um, Oberyn Tune miscounted. And um, it was too late. So this tower has 9 floors. It's the only tower ever that has nine floors and well forever will be so this floor is a little bit confusing and this part is very funny i didn't show that well this part is very funny we'll take you through it for the beginning you stick to the wall there's a small block that you can barely see that's in between these two and then one stud wide block to the edge there. There are two kill bricks in the middle. Another one stood walk. And this is where the trickery begins. So typically you would go ahead and head all the way around here and do these wraparounds. These are like half stud wrap like half stud wide on each side. These suck, even for my skill level. This part is painful. There's a way that you can skip the rest of this and the, the skip the rest of this floor. Literally, let me explain. 
So this is not high enough, and you can climb on top of it. Kind of like the same way you did on floor 6. Do not go onto this section. You're gonna keep going. And then you get to this part. So you land here. And then get on top of this. Do a tower jump. And now, you're on this final one stud here. And you're able to walk to the wind pad. So let me go ahead and explain this again. When you get to here, climb up. Now, be careful of your health. This is something I should probably should have said. Be very careful about your health. Because this part eats through your health really badly. And it might, it's going to be a little bit tricky to heal right here. So you'll tap, need to tap yourself. Get on top, do the tower jump. And you have to do that because it's literally like right here. And then you can simply walk to the wind pad. You've beaten your first challenging tower. Congratulations! So you have your first challenging tower down. Uh, that's not good enough. That was free. So, yeah, that's really good, and technically that's your hardest achievement, but it really isn't. Immense higher is definitely harder. So, there you go. So, let's go ahead and head back in, because we're going to do the other challenging tower. And we're actually going to go ahead and work a little bit hard this time. Tower of Stress by Hat Rock. So, I know you might be going, Well, Logan, why are you making me do another challenging tower? Well, screen punching is a free challenging tower point. And, um, when you try to unlock ring six, you'll be thankful because you'll have two challengings already. And you need three. So you only need to be one more challenging, which is awesome. Now here, do not go up this and then go this way. Roblox Physics made that part really inconsistent. Do it the way I did. 4-1's very simple. In fact, um, that's the rest of it there. You're already on two. Now here, you want to get to this final stud. Drop down to here. And climb your way up. That is the way I recommend you do this section. Yeah, don't go to this part. Go to here, and then you're able to climb up. Alright. So, this is another ladder thing. Remember what we learned, but this is a ladder. So, make sure you hold W. Doing This is called a ladder, and, um, sorry, my talking and commentating has been very confusing. These will drop you off, so you absolutely need to hold W on them, so... You'll go slower, but trust me, you'll be able to make it to the other side just fun. Alright, now at the edge, jump onto this ladder, and you'll notice something funny happen towards the top. Oh crap, I walked through it. Nah, don't worry, just, just simply walk through here. And that's the end of the floor, you're already on four. Now, here's the thing though. This tower is hard because of the final floors. The final floors have some, uh... Really funny jumps. I'm just gonna put it that. Go on the left side. When you get to this part though, you're gonna be confused. Go as far left as you can, and then you wanna go to the left side a little bit, and then climb up. That part's really confusing. It's really awkward. You really just kinda have to learn it. It's really the easiest way to put it, not gonna lie. When you get to this ladder, make sure you're in the middle if you can, because these kill bricks, they will hurt. I'm in a very laggy server, so there's little to no issue right now. But, um, yeah, be careful. For this, you need to go to the right. The left side is just useless. It will literally just send you to nothing. And this is a little weird, but it's nothing game-breaking. It's just reversed. And, yeah, do not do that. Um, do not do that. Do that, and you're on six. Now, when you get to here, do that. Let me go ahead and uh, do that again so that you guys can see. I'd actually recommend you do- okay, okay. For real. 
when you get here, you do that. That will make your life way easier. It's a little awkward to land, but that will make your life easier. Or you can do the wraparound, whatever's easier for you. And now, you're screwed. Welcome to the reason why this tower is challenging and the reason why you'll be ripping your hair out. The beginning of this floor is chill, but it has some really questionable jumps, like this one. This is a tower that's going to test your long jump ability. So, um, good luck. Let me explain to you very well how to do a long jump. Get to the edge, like I am, get to around like here, look over, and then go for it. Just like that. That's the best way to do it. Now, this is a pretty easy one. And you can just tilt your camera like that. Believe it or not, even though this may seem like it'd be easier, it's not easier because you're doing this unclimbable. You can climb on this. You can climb up, which makes those jumps easier doing it that way. And in fact, there's a whole nother method for doing long jumps that are unclimbable. But... That's a little too advanced for you. Now, when you get here, I'd actually recommend you wrap up like that. That will skip some very awkward one stunts. And now to the jump. This is the single worst jump that you have ever experienced so far. This. You have to transition from here to there. And here's the easiest way to do it. Get into a position like this and then go for it. This jump is really painful for beginners, and it was very painful for me. And these jumps are very long as well. But once you've done that, you've made it past seven. So great job if you're able to do that. Because, boy, it is pain. Now be careful of these wraparounds. Okay, so, when you try to climb up here, make sure you're at the very edge and go up. Now, this is an awkward transition. Hold W and um, just fit in. You'll have to let go. You're gonna fail that. I'm just gonna be honest, you're gonna fail that. It's very awkward. I know I failed that when I first attempted this, and it was very weird. Now, these spinners do not move. You do not move with the spinners, so be careful. Do that jump like that, and got some final long jumps at an angle. You're on nine. Nice job. And you get a brief introduction to floor nine before you go ahead and do the funniest truss in the game. Yeah, what you're literally about to do is a long jump onto this truss. And now you have to climb all the way up. Ah, have some nice refreshing drink to go ahead and do this with. Very entertaining gameplay, I know. I know you want to watch this very bad, but I hate to be rude. I'm going to go ahead and skip up to the top. You, you have to experience this for yourself because this is genuinely very fun. Wow, that was really exciting. Sorry that I didn't show that. I genuinely feel very bad. But now you're on 4-9. Do not do that the way I just did. Jesus, don't do that. Go into this forwards like that. That will make your life way easier. And these fall. Be Oh god, that falls. That got me. So, yeah, you have to get to here before you're safe. And this will be a little awkward to time because, you know, you're used to having to get off of falling platforms right away, but... And now... <laughs> I forgot about that troll. So, you look like you go onto there, but it's a troll and you just fall down to here. That just got me confused as well. Haven't played this tower in a while. So you go this way, and you have to do one of the worst jumps in JTO. Well, not in JTO, but this jump does suck. You want to go ahead and line yourself up to, like, right about here, and just climb up. Now, when you get to the top, though, you'll need to rotate like that. Now, that's one method. The 
other method is kind of like the keyboard eating method. Well, it's kind of like the one. Isn't a keyboard eating has a jump like this? Where you're gonna, have, you're gonna do that like this. So find whatever's easiest for you. And now you're at 10. Now, you kind of have to do um, this weird moment. No, I'm just joking. There's like a bath right here that you have to do. Go on this path. And you're right on the other side. You'll be fine. Jump. Okay. When you get here, hold W and slowly rotate your camera. And you'll be able to go up like that. Do not try and jump onto that. It will not end well because it's such a small block. You're going to have pain. And then from there on out, the tower is very simple. Congratulations! You have beaten your first actual challenging tower stress. Bye bye. And now you have the chat losing their mind. So you have done two challenging towers like that, and I don't know if tower stress for you guys might feel harder than immense ire or not, but. There you go, and now finally, finally, it is time for us to go to Ring 4. So here it is, Ring 4. We have 17 towers now, out of the 22 that we need. And we've definitely beaten 5 hards and uh, 2 difficult, so let's go ahead and head on in. And uh, take a look at Ring 4. So this is what it looks like. You can go ahead and walk down into the uh, tower section. And here is the difficulty chart. So yeah, this difficulty chart is a little weird. So you got some easier towers on the bottom. And then challenging has nothing. And all of a sudden you have some pretty hard stuff here at the end. So, welcome to Ring 4. And, um, this is where the game starts to become a little bit difficult. As you can see, this kind of is like, um, Ring 1 in a way, but it has fewer towers. So, who oh boys. We're gonna go ahead and start off with Spiraling Heights, the easiest one, and this tower is very easy, and... Oh, would you look at that! It's made by me as well! Oh, my part in this is absolutely f terrible. Probably the worst floor in the entire game. Let's go right into this, shall we? Oh yeah, this is a weird pushing platform that you have to do from the side because it is angled. That is something I definitely should say. But other than that, the rest of this tower is a piece of cake. You don't need to worry about it. Oh, look, it's my very terrible and disgusting floor. Look at this garbage. Oh, this floor is so bad. It has a very sad story to it as to, like, when I made it and stuff. That I'll probably forever keep private, but there is a good reason why that this is absolutely garbage. But, and it's a uh, fairly sad story, but oh well. This is literally... That tightrope is copied from one of the previous floors, and this is literally just ice and salt part with more wraps in it. It's so bad! I don't know how back then they wanted to go ahead and uh, keep that part. I would have so redone that. It was so freaking terrible. I feel so bad. It's so bad. One day I probably will ask the staff team if I could go ahead and revamp that floor, but I'm not too confident they're gonna let me do that. Alrighty, and that is Tosh. GG. Oh, I got bounced. There we go. And this sign still has my old name on it. They didn't fix it, the son of a guns. Alright. Spiraling Heights complete. Let's just go ahead and move on. Ah, it's time to get gnomed. I don't think there's going to be too much to talk about, if anything. So, um, this might be a, um, a, uh, 
skip to the wind pad, but we'll see about that. Actually, no. There's one part I know that I'm gonna include. Also, um, a little fun fact. This tower was originally difficult on the chart. Yeah, when you beat this, you can tell me if you think it deserves that uh, title or not. <laughs> Aw, yeah! Let's go! The trap's got me. Ah, uh, I forgot this tower has a few funnies. I actually recommend you do restart if you fall below that section. Because, um... Yeah. Oh my god, why am I so bad? I actually do, once again, recommend you restart because... That will reset those into their normal positions, and oh god, you do not want to do that part. Why am I so bad? You don't want to do that part. Just trust me, when they are all going crazy and scribbling out. Oh jeez, you do not. Ah, no, this part. Oh, it's the cloud section where... You're pretty much just gonna have to somehow find the way. So, I might get lucky and find it very quickly. And other times you cannot find it for the life of you! Uh, I hate the cloud part! Alright, back to this garbage section. I want to see if I can find the route while recording with you guys so that you can use it. Like my route if you want. Even though I'm probably doing some jumps that are probably out of your skill range, but... Yeah, well. Uh, this part sucks, and I don't remember where to go. Alright, we're back here again. Yeah, you're definitely not gonna land that jump, but... Alright, that worked for me, but I don't think you guys are gonna be able to pull off some of the jumps I did, but... Yeah, pretty much figure it out. No easy other way to explain it. Did I just... Yeah, I just did a skip by accident. Well, um... Instead of taking the spinner... Feel free to just go ahead and do that. That's fine with me. Alright. Welcome to 10. And this is where... There are some funny parts. Specifically... Dealing with this part. So that spins around. And um, it's basically it's spinner reception here. And it's really hard to understand what to do. And even for me, this part sucks. So basically, I'm waiting for this to come around. And I gotta hope I'm in a good position for it. This time I am. To not mess up the jump onto the. Uh, oh well. Alright, let's try that again. I did it again! Bro, that part is actually garbage, even for me! Why does that part exist? Uh... Alright, I think we got ourselves a good cycle again. Yes, there we go. That part is so bad. Oh yeah, then you gotta go ahead and head onto this planet right after. Now these me at the same... Oh, these are also desynced. Oh, boy. Oh, God, they're colliding. Okay. Yeah, this part is very finicky and odd. And, um, probably is gonna be why you spend a lot of time on this tower, not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, be careful. You gotta do long jumps here, and you beat the tower. Jeez, that is so dumb. I hate this. Oh, that was nine tennis for- Okay, whatever. GG. Getting gnome down. Ooh, look, we got in a brand new server. All right, so now that we've gotten getting gnome down, now is where things are going to become a little bit of a problem, especially if you're a mobile player. Because um, let me go into Linenophobia for you. Yeah, you see the problem? There's tight ropes everywhere. This entire tower is um, tight rope heavy. So if you're on mobile, I highly recommend that you follow a triangular covering guide. This is a tower inside 
of Forgotten Ridge for the sake of this guy. I'll have a link to it in the description below. It is not by myself at all. It's made by somebody else. Because, yeah, like, come on. This is just, like, there's no way you're going to do this on mobile without completely crying. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and, um, if you're a PC player, go into this. But if you're a mobile or anything, do not attempt this tower. You're going to cry in pain. So, do triangular covering instead. But, nonetheless, I digress. We're going to go ahead and uh, continue here. And, well, this tower, like I said, it is a tightrope tower. It just spams tightropes. That's its entire purpose in life, is it just spams them. So, we're going to go ahead and take it easy. And, well, I'm going to show you the very funny sections, because this tower definitely has a couple of them. Oh, some guy beat TOI. Nice to him. Alright, beginning of floor three. If I remember right, there's something funny here. Ah, yes. So this, you can easily hit your head on. So you want to jump very late. Because if you don't, this will happen. Well, I'm not going to show what will happen. But you can um, do something like this. And then, like, fall. So you want to jump late there. So you um, will hit your head still. It's inevitable. But you'll be able to slide right in just fine. Now for me, I barely fell. I'm going to go ahead and show that again for you. Because that is something that is very important. Jump late. You'll be able to pass that part every time. Oh yeah, this is one thing that's very important. This tower uses a bunch of kill bricks. See that? Now this server's a little laggy for some reason, even though this just opened up. I literally made this server. So keep an eye on that. That is something that can be a very big problem if you're not careful with your health. And this tower has quite a few kill brick sections that are spread out. Before you know it, you might look up at your health on the top right hand corner and you're on red and there's nothing you can do about it, so... Be very careful about that. It has happened a few times. To me in my career. Um, probably not a few, but... More than that. And that's what you get for rushing. Great job, Logan. You're an idiot. There are multiple tightropes in this tower that are in really crappy spots that you can easily hit your head on. So be very careful that when you're going through certain sections, that if you think that it has a remote chance, like you can hit your head on it, I would highly recommend that you um, are careful about that because that is something that can easily screw you up. I'm just going to warn you, this tower might seem really easy, but it gets worse the higher you go because the tightropes get thinner and thinner. Also, I don't know if um, these... If it's basically a 7 stud route, not gonna lie. I don't know if those are gonna be hard jumps for you guys, so that's how I do those. Remember the wraparound technique, it's very useful. And when you're transitioning here, don't go all the way up. Just jump and go ahead and transfer. So, you probably have seen throughout this beginner guide, beginner's guide series that I've been doing tight ropes pretty quickly. And I just ram right through them. This tower is great practice to go ahead and just ram right through these. And even though this tower sucks, I always recommend it. Because it is very helpful. Alright, once we get to floor 7 here, this is where the tower starts to go ahead and uh, start to be a little bit more funny. If you get what I mean. And more specifically, this floor uses Killbrick Spam. So, be very careful. And, um, I'm about to pull some shenanigans here. And as you can see, my health is pretty low, so be careful. But, uh, here's some shenanigans that, uh, I would absolutely highly not recommend. Okay. Gotta be a little careful my health. I'm being a little bit hypocritical when I'm talking about how important your health needs to be. And I'm just going ahead and ramming through things. Please do not do what I do here. I'm just trying to be a little bit funny, okay? <laughs> do not do that, Skip, please. First of all, you're probably not going to be skilled enough to high jump that. And second of all, it barely skips anything. Look, it, it just barely skips anything. <laughs> That's just me being a little bit funny. But, um, I mean, yeah, just don't do that. Here it is, right here. Near the end of the floor, actually. 
Yeah, right at the end of the floor. Be careful here. Do not do these wraparounds because you'll hit your head on this tightrope. Let me show you what you should do here. Climb onto this tightrope and get off of it, and then just go on it. You'll skip those two wraparounds and you won't hit your head. There you go. Now, f yeah, um, that is something that could easily happen to you guys. There is a little bit of a funny physics thing where if you try and land on thinner um, platforms like that, you'll just simply clip right out, and it's a little bit annoying, but ain't much you can do about it other than to just go ahead and deal with it, so sorry about that. Oh boy, do not jump on this tightrope either. That almost ended terribly. Okay. Yeah, gotta be careful when you're jumping around on tightropes. Alright, let's see if I can go ahead and pass this again. So, normally I would say to try and walk onto it, but look, it's too far away. Seriously, I didn't get on... T what? I did not have this issue when I tried to beat this earlier. Okay. Uh, this tower always proves to be very terrible to me. <sighs> okay, let's try this yet again. Because I'm actually going to walk onto it that time. Even though I said I wasn't going to. Alright. So we got that down. And um, floor 9 is probably the hardest floor of the tower. And it also has an outside. <laughs> I'm actually going to show me doing the entire outside because this outside is very sophisticated. And it has some garbage parts in it. I fell here a couple times earlier. So, it is pain. Alright, can I hit my head on that? Absolutely not. Okay. we're good. Nope. Transfer over. That's closer than you think. Get in. Good. Alright. Nine outside down. Yeah, that outside's really bad. You're probably gonna fail there a couple times. But the good news is, once when you pass that, you got yourselves floor 10. Now, floor 10's tight ropes are the thinnest. The further you go, the further you go up, the thinner these ropes do get. And floor 10 has a very unfriendly attraction on it. A tightrope maze. However, I wouldn't be worried. The tightrope maze is fairly simple in terms of where to go. In fact, here we go. So once we get up to here... Oh, never mind. This is the beginning of the maze now. Okay. So you want to go ahead and take the first left. Now, turning while on a tightrope is very tricky. And is even a skill that I'm not very good at. As you can see here. You want to be careful. Because if your legs start splitting. You might start moving around. Un you will actually start moving around uncontrollably. Like that. And if you're not quick enough to go ahead and um, prepare for it. It's not good. Alright. So you want to take then another left here. Go. Now you don't want to take that right. You don't want to take that rope. Or that left. You want to take this rope. Okay. I don't know what happened there. There's a button here that um, prevents you from cheesing the tower. Because you might have noticed this tower is split. Well, now there's a dropper. As you can see, here's the dropper. And, well, make sure you have full health. Shouldn't be a problem. But, this dropper has one last challenge waiting for you. And if you fail it, 
You've lost the entire tower. Now, first of all, be very careful here, because this is where, if you fall down there, you're done. So yeah, some towers in Jato have this yu cheese barrier, and what that is for is that these towers have, like, um, ways that you can skip them. And, um, well, there will be a barrier there if you do go ahead and skip them significantly. However, we don't need to worry about that. Because we did a tower legit. Now, be very careful that you drop onto this one stun. And now you have to do this final tightrope to the wind bath. That it is not aligned, so you have to do this perfectly. And if you fail this, you have to do the entire tower over again. So take it nice and slow, be very careful. And there you go. As you can see, if you drop back to the rest of the tower, you go. And there you go. Blending the phobia down. One of the most annoying and frustrating towers in the game. So. There it is, Lenophobia. So, we're gonna do one last tower inside of this ring, and that is going to be Elysium. So this tower is hard difficulty. I do not think it's hard difficulty. I think it is difficult on the shark, because there are some very garbage parts in it that are, let's just say not beginner friendly. They're not. They are really painful and um, really frustrating. You're not going to enjoy this tower. But this is a great tower to get down now rather than later. You do not want to come back to this later when you have to try and unlock a ring further in the game and just get so frustrated. Just do it now, please. It will make your life way easier. So let's go ahead and do this. But Elysium starts off very simple and um, for the most part... And the, the first half is literally free. It's the second half where the funnies start. So, you might think, oh, this is a pretty chill tower. Well, here's one part that's a little bit confusing. So here, you can go ahead and do this path legit, or you can do what I like to do. I transfer and just go like that. I pretty much just have muscle memory that tells me what to do there, and I pass it. This is a When you see these parts... Like in TOM, remember, just treat it like it's 2D. Pretend that you can't move your mouse at all. Okay, now this part can get a little bit confusing, but overall, it's fairly simple. Once again, just treat it like a 2D part. Jump so you don't get conveyed as much. Now here, what I do is go like this, get up against the wall, and then just jump. And then you'll be able to go ahead and suck in. Now here, you want to st stand on this and then get on the ladder. Because if not, you're just going to infinitely climb on that ladder and not get anywhere. Okay. And now I'm going to show you a nice little skip that you can do. So this is like a little weird puzzle. I don't even know how it works. I think I remember a while ago trying to do the 1, 2, 3, whatever. It doesn't work. Go on top of this. Now you're going to take damage and quickly wrap onto the staircase. You'll skip this entire puzzle and you won't get kicked. It's a... Everybody pretty much uses that skip when they beat this tower. Please do that. It will save you time. And well, these next two floors are um, freebies. Like, quite literally. So that last floor was like the puzzle and a staircase. And this is just a staircase. And now... Now is where the pain begins. This is floor 7, I believe. And this floor is really bad. It's... That's just the easiest way to describe it. Rule of thumb, if you ever see something like this where you can, um, like, hit your head easily, wrap around it. Please, just wrap around it. You do not want to fall down all the way down because you hit your head. It's a very painful thing. Now, this outside, I'm going to be honest, is fairly simple. Be careful of these conveyors. It's fairly simple for the most part. Until you get to the end of it, and one of these parts that sucks is this. Do not jump forward, wrap around it, because you'll hit your head on this. And notice how it's extended by one stud? You won't be able to climb onto it, and you will fall. It's what happened to me, and it really sucks, and I do not, like, I did not enjoy it. So, please wrap around that, and plus that will likely tilt forward, so that will make your life even easier to do that wrap around, because it will be easier next time. Now, all of these tilt, 
It doesn't really matter, but be careful, because these are very light and they will tilt very easily, as you will be able to see. Look at them. They tilt pretty bad. And these also tilt. And now, welcome to the most infamous part of the tower. This is the part that is known for being the worst part. And, um... Well, um, for very good reason, because this part does suck a lot. Let me go ahead and explain how it works. This is a shadow part, if you remember. But the thing is, the shadow parts are on the other side. So these greens are the real, and these yellows are fake. And it's mirrored. In the beginning of it, it's fine. When you get here, though, notice how this is extended out. Well, because this is extended to the right, we have to go to the left. So we'll jump here. Now this is perfectly aligned, these four blocks of where it is. So use these as help. And you'll have to transfer over a couple times. And then you'll climb onto here. Now remember, you do not go on these yellow. If you fall, you'll get sent onto this conveyor, and then you'll have to land on those stairs. This jump is the reason why people hate this tower. It's really hard to explain. You press D and then hold W up. Just like that. Use the keyboard overlay. And then... This shadow part is really easy from there. That's the only bullcrap. For this, though, get near to the top of this part and transfer out. And now you're on 8. Actually, I'm sorry. This is 6. This is 7, isn't it? 10, 9, yep, yeah, it is. Okay, so we're on 7 now. So I'm going to show you what to do here. But before we go ahead and do anything, I recommend you do this conveyor jump first. This conveyor jump is really hard and really precise. It is probably one of the hardest jumps you have had to dealt with thus far. It is probably even worse than the tower stress jump. You saw how I did it? That's the easiest way to go ahead and explain it. Alright, so now you have this weird um, challenge here. Let me show you what you do. On this row, go on this fourth one. And then on the second row here, you want to go on the third and fifth. And then you're good. You just got to go ahead and do that backwards. And then you're able to go ahead and go around here. And you're able to continue on. And then that's pretty much the rest of 7. There ain't much to talk about. This section is very easy. Okay, so welcome to floor 8. The only good news is, if you fall... Back down here... You'll be able to, um... If you did it quick in time... Be able to go ahead and not do those puzzles again. Which I'm sure is something that would be really nice for you. So this floor is really complicated. It's just complicated. It's really hard to understand where to go and stuff, so I'm gonna take you through it. I'm gonna go ahead and show the entire thing so that you can see what I do, because this floor is not very sight read friendly. You really need a guide. All right. It doesn't get too bad until you get to this, because here you have to do something. You have to go up this, which is a very hard jump to land. You have to do that because that jump is impossible. You cannot do that jump. So you have to go ahead and do that skip, which is extremely difficult and very painful to pull. But after that, this floor is pretty much done. You're good from here. There we go. And that's the rest of floor 8. You're now on 9. Okay, so 9 has this massive tilting platform. And, well, I'm just going to be honest. Floor 9 just sucks. Thank God I got lucky. Floor 9 uses a bunch of conveyors. And, well, hope you're good at your conveyors. Because you're going to need them. I personally try to look forward there and pretend the conveyors don't exist, but you'll need to find a way that works for you. You might be able to tilt the camera in the opposite direction of the conveyor and such. 
That's also another technique that some people use. But, yeah. Now this is a mirrored section that shows you what blocks you can land on and which blocks you can't. And as you can see, my health is getting fairly low. Now this looks like a conveyor maze, but honestly, it's not that hard. The hardest part is actually not overshooting or and landing on the wrong conveyor, because you get a lot of power. Now one tip I have on conveyors that I actually should have said earlier is you want to try and jump onto the conveyor. The reason why that's helpful is because you're able to go ahead and control it easily. If you try to walk on it, you then have to react to it getting it. In this case, you don't. That will make life much easier. But I accidentally went the wrong way because I'm a dummy, so... We're going to have to go ahead and head back there and do that again. So jump onto the conveyors. And you want to go forward three. And then you want to go to the right three. And then you want to go to the right two. Just be careful like that. And then go to the yeah you go to the right one and then you're on the trust. Great job. Uh, why can't I? Okay, nice. So this is floor ten. If you get here, you're pretty much good to go. You can fail this floor easily, but overall, this floor is a piece of cake. Before you do anything, make sure your health is full. That's what I recommend. So I'm gonna wait for my health to be full because you're gonna have to go all the way around this. All right, this is the last part. Now, this is a little bit of a um, challenge. So what you need to do is um, use your, the camera trick to figure out if certain things are can collide true or can collide false. That's the entire preface of this. Now remember, if your camera pushes on like this, see how my camera isn't going through? That's what you want to land on. If your camera goes through the block like this, that is not where you want to go. Now use your scroll wheel to um, see where you need to go. It's not there. It's not there. Okay, gotta do a little bit of a far jump. Oh, no, 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 no. That clearly is not what you're supposed to do. Okay, what you actually want to do, I think, is you go back to this five. There we go. And now the path should be way easier. Go to this one. Go to this one. Go to this one. Quite literally. This nine. This. That nine, then I think it's the five, then the one. I think every um, box that is yellow is can't collide true, but do not take my word for it and then fall. Boom, there you go. You beat the tower. GG. Get a look at this nice tree that's on the top, because... You're never going to want to see that tree ever again. You, ju you just don't. You don't. You, you don't want to. <laughs> so, Tower of Elysium is down. So now, here's the cool thing, right? Alright, so we're going to head back to the ring select because, as you may probably notice, you're one point away from getting into ring five. But here's the thing. Alrighty. Well, well, well. Now that you've done Tower of Elysium, congratulations. Because you're one tower away to being able to get in to a good old Ring 5. Now, if you've done a dirty version of this guide where you've deviated from what I've told you, shame on you. Because now... You're absolutely screwed, because here's the thing. This guide, well, I kind of use one of the game's mechanics to the advantage. In order to get into Ring 5, you need to have four difficults and one challenging. But, what if I told you you're able to go in right now in terms of the tower difficulties that you've done? Because of one specific mechanic that the game has. 
if you've beaten a tower that is higher than the difficulty that's presented on the ring sled, it will automatically give that one a point. What am I trying to say here? What I am saying is if you've done a challenging tower, that challenging counts towards difficult as well. I know it's very confusing. <laughs> so basically, we've done so far three challengings, or excuse me, three difficults and two challengings. Because that we've done two challengings, that also counts towards our difficult count. So even though that <clears throat> we've only done three difficults, you're able to unlock rank five right now. So if you've done dirty to this guy, uh-oh. Unlocking ring five is going to be a little bit of a nightmare for you. Because now you need to go ahead and fix that. But maybe potentially this will help you. Because here's the thing. This is the last video that I will be doing that helps you be able to get tower to tower progression in this game. And the thing is, I can't just release you into the wild and expect you to know how to make good choices. Because now, it is time for you to make your first actual choice on what you're going to beat. Before I mention what towers to do, here's a challenge that you would want to do here. Is you want to stick with what you've chosen. Because as soon as you start trying to do the others, you're going to have issues here. It's a very common mistake that somebody will try to do three or four different towers at once and absolutely get to, into a gridlock where they can't play the game anymore. You need to sit and work and push through hard if you want to be able to be successful at this game. You can't have five or six different towers sitting on the table that you haven't done yet and say, there's nothing I can do. Go suck it up, choose one of them, and get it done. So that's something that is very important to mention here. So, in order to unlock rank 5, you'll be making your first gameplay choice. As long as you haven't done this guy dirty. I'm going to give you three different options. The first option requires you to go into Forgotten Bridge. There, you'll be two steeples. Steeple of Pursuit and Steeple of Uninstalling Roblox. Remember, it's a half a point each for steeples. Now, here's something I'm going to go ahead and say immediately. Both of these steeples may seem pretty annoying at first. They could be pretty annoying. But as soon as you're able to learn them, they shouldn't be that bad. Also in the Forgotten Ridge, you got Tower of Versatility. This is a tower that's difficult on the chart, and is commonly considered to be the best in the entire Forgotten Ridge. However, this tower is a little longer and might present itself to be a little bit of a challenge for you. Lastly, inside of Ring 3, you have Tower of Fatness, the easiest tower that you haven't done there. This tower is a little unique and it's pretty old, and if you decide to choose this one, you're in for a very different and unique time. So. Go ahead and choose, and go right in. For me, I gotta go ahead and do some additional stuff. And I'll be able to unlock Ring 5 as well. And then there, I'll give you my final speech. And then let you off onto the adventure that is Jato. Alrighty. Good luck on the other side. And of course, if you need help with those towers, feel free to take a look in the description below. Guides are always your friend. But, if you want to try and beat these without a guide, go for it. Just don't torture yourself. Alright, I'll see you on the other side now. Well, congratulations if you're able to um, overcome that final choice challenge. Because now, you have reaped the rewards of unlocking Ring 5. And hence, Beginner's Guide ends. So, before I go, I'm going to go ahead and give you some last advice. Some very lengthy last advice. And then... It's up to you. So, welcome to Ring 5. Here's the difficulty chart. Here's what it looks like. And there's only three tower classifications here. Beginner, Intermediate, and Advanced. There is a reason why that is there, and you can go ahead and find that out yourself. But, it's nothing really special. So, yeah, this ring has a lot of intense towers. A lot of them. Also, a lot of challenging towers. So, this ring is extremely difficult has a lot of harder stuff. In fact, in the intermediate, you have two challengings and an intense here, which is quite a bit. And then you also have the uh, beginner towers, which are a little bit tricky for beginners, but nonetheless, it shouldn't hurt that much. 
We got nice views, getting kind of disappointed, and bridge of success. So this is what ring five looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and give a lot of advice here and a lot of information because there's a lot of things I haven't discussed in this guide yet that you're going to want me to discuss. So lots of information going down here. There's going to be multiple timestamps for this segment. So feel, watch this whole thing first and then we'll get into this in a second. Um, if you're looking for certain questions to be answered or you don't remember part, feel free to go ahead and go to the timestamps. So, this video is going to remain opened, like I said, until Ring 5's difficulty chart changes. Currently, to my knowledge, there are two towers in Ring 5 that could move. And that's TOEA and Toga. Those are the two towers that can move. This one, you don't need to worry about. Because if you want to do this as your first intense, I say don't do it. Because it's absolutely terrible. And plus, since it's being victim of likely moving down, don't do it. It's not a reliable point. But we'll talk about intenses in a little bit with this current fear of towers being moved down. So, let's talk about going further down the game first. Because this chart, if you took a JTO player, like an actual JTO player, into a ring or area and show them this chart... They would say this is an easier rank, because they're right, it is. Ring 6 onward is insanely difficult. In fact, the next time you'll see an area like this is Ring 8. This is considered a break area later in the game, so it's way worse. And Ring 6's easiest tower is a hard, and there's only one of them. The rest of them are up the chart further. And, well, you can see the difficulty lies in the ring select if you're interested to see what those are like. So here's the thing that is very important that I want to mention here. The difference between Ring 6 and Ring 7 is absolutely massive. So Ring 6 was released to the public in the first quarter of 2019. This is important because this is what I like to call the transitioning period of JTO. Basically what this is, was a time in JTO where players were starting to, or builders I should say, were starting to get a little bit more complicated with their towers. And some of them made it out good. And some of them were absolutely terrible. So, there's a lot, there's some winners, but also a lot of losers in Ring 6 in terms of quality of towers. So, that was a transitioning period. Ring 7 was released a year later, almost a year later. It was like 11 months or something. That is when the whole transitioning period was over. And then you have the modern towers of today. A lot of the towers there are going to be a lot like what you're going to be used to in newer areas of the game. Obviously, there are some winners, and there are some losers. That's for every area. Feel free to go ahead and check out Ring 7 when you get there, because some of them are really good, but there's also some towers there that are not so good. And it won't take you long to find out which ones those are. So, here's another thing you need to worry about Ring 7. That's called the difficulty chart shift. For those of you who watched the first Beginner's Guide update would know I talked about this. The further down you get in the game currently, and this is going to stay, the chart shifts. So basically, rings 1 through 6 were kind of like trying to get a feel of the chart, and stuff were not placed very accurately. Ring 7, though, that's kind of when the difficulty chart started getting into position. So what is considered a low intense in ring 7 is going to be way worse than a low intense in ring 1. So Tower of Impossible Expectations is going to feel way easier than Tower of um, Triple O. That tower's name is absolutely tedious. In uh, Ring 7, they're both baseline intense, but TO Triple O is way harder, so... That's something to take into consideration, is not only do do the towers get way harder, on average, the um, difficulty chart is also worse. And the towers also have more complex mechanics. So let's talk about what you should do now. So progressing down the game without having me as a guide. There is a general rule, and that's go ahead and... Um, Go into the game, look at the difficulty chart, and then go ahead and go from there. Here's the thing I highly recommend you don't do. Most people might sit now, down and now go, Oh, okay, we're just going to go ahead and wipe out all the easier stuff and then unlock a new area. Don't do that. Please, please don't do that. That's going to make your life way worse. Do a mix of both. Do some easier stuff and do some harder stuff. So, for example, um... Oh, this is just an example. Don't take this as advice. Let's say I needed four towers to move down into 
ring six. You don't. So let's say that I'm going to do maybe nice views and uh, rich success. And I'll leave keeping, getting kind of disappointed for later for an another cleanup that will be easy. And then maybe I might do something harder if I have the skill like TOOC, for example. So that's just an example, obviously. Just an example. Just giving you a little bit of an idea that you do not want to go ahead and suck up all the easier towers immediately. Because when you try and unlock later rings... You're going to be suffering a lot more. You're going to be beating all hard towers, and it's going to absolutely suck. So don't go ahead and suck up all the easier towers. So that's my general rule. And right now, at least, difficulty chart isn't always your friend, because these charts are outdated. That will obviously change. So that's the general rule for you. Don't only concentrate on easier stuff. Concentrate on some harder stuff. Notice how in this guide, there are definitely some holes for you. There are definitely quite a few towers that are easier that I have not shown. Those can be used to your advantage, just be careful. So now that you're in Ring 5, and, well, Ring 5 is kind of a transitioning period for Jato as well, but not really. Some of the towers here start to use more advanced mechanics, and you will start to notice that towers are starting to get a little bit more complicated here. When you play through, you'll be able to see this um, very well, so... When you play through towers, you'll notice stuff very quickly. That stuff is getting newer here. Because of this, now that you're starting to be able to get into the time where you're getting more sophisticated into things, I actually recommend that for those who want to, check out the zones. Remember, there's a whole second world to this game. And there's that world too there for you that you can obviously go ahead and check out. The zones are really weird. Zone 1 was 2018. Zone 2 is 2019. Basically, it's like one a year, pretty much, if I'm honest, in terms of the zones. So every new zone you get to, the towers are a lot different. <laughs> Stuff is a lot more complicated and a lot more sophisticated. So that's something also to take into consideration. So I would recommend that you also think about checking out the zones. And if you want a break from World 1, completely understandable. Feel free to take a break and try to progress into the zones. The zones are great. They might also be a little bit more laggy, because they have a lot more towers. Zone 1 has 16 towers in it. 16 of them. That's a lot. And right, zones either have 15 or 16 towers, which is an absolute ton. There's a lot of towers for you to play and enjoy inside the zones for each area. And because of this, the requirements are way steeper and way more difficult. So keep this into consideration. Let's now talk about first intense tower. So here's the thing. Intense difficulty is considered what is the casual difficulty, in a way, to JTO players further in the game. And, like, overall, for anybody who is more skilled, intense difficulty is like the casual difficulty. Where it's a little difficult, but it also is very enjoyable and fun. So, because of that, there is a lot of towers in this game that are intense difficulty. In fact, intense difficulty has the most towers out of any difficulty in the game. There's a lot of them. So therefore, you want to get into intense towers pretty early if you're able to do it. And I highly recommend you do. I was going to make a whole video about your first intense tower, but obviously difficulty charge shifts are happening. So that's going to make them very unreliable quickly. And then we're also waiting for Kohad to release, which won't be for a while. So I'm going to give you a general idea. There are two intense towers I'm aware of that are currently in victim of moving. And that is Tofaf in Ring 2 and TOEA in Ring 5. And as I already discussed, TOEA is not good. In terms of what you should do, to put it kind of short, impossible expectations. Go ahead and check that out inside of Ring 1. There is a practice place, by the way, now. You can actually practice towers that are intense and above in older areas. Some of the, new, the newer areas don't have their um, practice places yet. But if you go on the JTO wiki, you can go ahead and find them as well. Now, if you do use the JTO wiki, this is also another link in the description below, be careful. Do not listen to what you should do before or moving on because they're, it's just not good advice. Don't listen to the wiki for progress advice. I use the, the only thing the wiki is useful for is a place link as well as a, um, oh, what's it, music if you're curious about that. And even then, if you're curious about what music there is in Towers, just put your mouse or hold this button, and it will show right up. So this is the music that 
you will be listening to inside of Ring 5's lobby. If you get if you get it. So if you're if you're like, dang, sound song sounds good, well that's how you could figure it out. You could just go ahead and go right into there, and you're able to completely understand what's going on with that song. So yeah, Jato Wiki isn't very good. Use it to figure out what tower. <laughs> Like a tower place, if you need it. And music. That's it. The information there is most of the time inaccurate. And the information there is also pretty garbage. It's like, wow, what a big shocker. It's not like I knew that before type of deal. Wiki isn't that good. I'm going to be honest with you. Wiki for this game is absolutely freaking terrible. So that's another thing to keep aware of. So to put it short, try impossible expectations out. Go ahead into practice time and go ahead and uh, do impossible expectations. Now, here's a warning I have for you if you do practice, if you go into practice time, which I recommend you do, is you have access to all the towers that are intense and remorseless that are in there. And I would recommend you do not go into any other tower other than the one you want to do. Because you're going to spoil yourself. And that's not good. Only do towers that you're planning on doing. All right, so that's first intense tower. If you're trying to go further up intense, Citadel of Laptop Splitting is a good option, and that is a must-do. Citadel of Laptop Splitting is an absolute must-do, in my opinion. So that's another thing to keep into uh, consideration. But in terms of other intense towers that you can do, Holy Flip's too high on the chart right now. Feel free to check out Holy Flip. That might be good for you. If you're better at wraparounds, if you've noticed you're really good at wrap rounds, check out Holy Flip. Make sure you watch a guy though, because that tower does have some spots that can be confusing. So that's another good option, but... In terms of Ring 5, only a tense I could really recommend is Tokyo Heights. And this is in a very inaccurate spot as well, so go ahead and check out Tokyo Heights. If you're curious, that's what Tokyo Heights looks like. It's a very different tower. Here it is. I'll go into it for you. So this is what it looks like. Most of the towers inside of this building, but where it gets its difficulty from is it has a lot of outside sections. Well, it doesn't have a lot, but the outside sections that there are are very difficult, and you can lose all your progress. So that's how Tokyo Heights gets its difficulty. And Tokyo Heights introduces trust flicking to you. So where you have to flick off your trusses now in order to transition in between trusses. So that might also cause confusion. So do be aware of that. Alright, an important thing I left out here that I really wanted to talk about is something else that's pretty important. There is no need to do a peak difficulty for a new hardest unless it is something that you genuinely like. So basically what I'm saying is if you're looking at a tower, like for example, like TOOC to do before an intense, um, I wouldn't do that because you can just go a little bit further up the chart and you'll be able to have access to... Um, that new difficulty, it'll only be a little bit harder, and, well, you'll save yourself a bunch of time. Now, obviously, TOOC isn't peak, but something like Tower of Stress, that's peak difficult. Personally, I wouldn't do Stress right away as a new hardest, when you could just go a little bit higher up and do Screen Punching. So, save the peak difficulties for later, and um, overall, you really don't need to worry about that. If you're looking at trying to do a peak intense before doing a remorseless, completely go ahead and ditch that and go right to remorseless. So that's something that is also a little bit helpful. It's going to be harder, yeah, but it's also going to save you a bunch of time because you'll spend a little bit extra time on the remorseless, but you're not grinding a whole nother tower as well to begin with. Now, let's talk about something that was added in after the second part of the guide that I never showed you. And you probably have noticed it when you got into the menu. It's monthly challenges and races. Races is for fun with friends. Obviously, I'm sure you can figure out what that is and it even tells you. Okay, so these are monthly challenges. If you go in here, it tells you multiple different challenges for you to do. Be very careful when you do monthly challenges. For you guys right now, you can definitely do all the beginner challenges very easily and you'll be able to be doing these just fine especially intermediate you'll be able to do these like beating a challenging tower in rank 5 yeah you can do TODM definitely doable and he said it on the spatial system go to go to zone 3 unlock zone 3 and do the citadel there that could be your first citadel that citadel is the easiest citadel in the game by a mile beat any zone 3 tower at the Zion Star once again that's an easier one beat the easiest tower in zone 3 
in under eight and a half minutes. It can be a little tight, but it's doable. So basically, these are fine. Advanced challenges, you gotta be careful with. These you have to be very careful with. Reach floor four of a high insane tower. This is something you don't wanna do. This is way above your skill level and is gonna and you probably can't even get past floor one to be honest. Be a beat falling and failing in under ten minutes. That is something that is insanely difficult to do. Beat the hidden tower in ring six. That's mid intense. You don't want to do that. Now keep in mind these are June's set, so these are gonna be different every month. And it beat any advanced tower in ring four. If this is actually a good one, because if you decide to do holy flip as your first intense, then you can claim this one and you get seven tickets out of it. So what are these tickets for? You may be asking. Well, the tickets are for some cosmetics. Um, check out the two shots that are in game right now in Ring 1 and Ring 2. Look around. If there's something that you're like, ooh, that looks good, then feel free to go ahead and try and get it. But if you're going through there and you're like, eh, nothing interesting, then you really have no reason to do these monthly challenges. Other than trying to challenge yourself. And oh yeah, don't even get me started with these. Reach floor 5 of a terrifying tower. <laughs> yeah, that one's garbage. This one is speedrunning a challenging difficulty tower that's really long. That's painful. Reborseless tower. Yeah, no. And then this is sophisticated. So, yeah, it's very difficult. These two... So basically what I'm saying is beginner and intermediate, go for them if you want to. Advanced, be very careful. And psychologically unsafe, you absolutely don't want to touch. So that's monthly challenges. There's currently a new area being worked on. A sub realm, actually, for Zone 1. And that's Paradise Atoll. This is the next area that is releasing for JTO. And I want to give a little bit of a PSA. This area was for a contest that was very competitive. So stuff there is, like, really fine-tuned. And it was very difficult for stuff like that to get in. So if you decide to play Paradise Axel when it releases for Zone 1, be careful. Because stuff there is going to be a lot more complicated than you might be used to. And you might get a little bit more frustrated. And if you get addicted to the modern stuff... Well, you're far away from a modern area. You either got to get to Ring 9 or go up to Zone 4. So, just be aware about that. Obviously, be careful about difficulty. Because, a lot like, right now, it's not very accurate. Like, these three intenses are completely in the wrong spot, if you ask me. these All three of these are wrong. And then, Holy Flip in Ring 4 is like a low mid. That is completely in the wrong spot. It shouldn't be that high. So, be careful about the difficulty chart is... It does... This gives you an idea, and that's about it. That's really it, is you just get an idea, and that is it. So be aware of that. And, well, if you're looking for advice on what you want to do, say, for example, you're like, well, I'm looking to be something that's a little bit harder, and, you know, I want to do my first remorseless stuff, right? I want to go ahead and do a first remorseless, because I think I'm skilled enough to do so. Which is something I'll cover in a, in a future beginner's guide in more detail. I want to go ahead and do Fractured Obstacles. Because it's on the lower end of Remorseless. Should I go ahead and do that? Well, if you ask my answer, it would be absolutely no way. But that's beside the point. You're not going to always know what towers are good and which aren't. Obviously, you can go into the practice area and check them out. But you can obviously ask people. Asking in the chat isn't very reliable. Because... Sometimes, most of the time you'll be ignored. Asking in the JTO Discord is risky. At times, I have seen people purposely trolling beginners into um, doing some very terrible towers and stuff that are way above their current skill level. So, yeah, JTO Discord is the best spot. I think the best spot, in my opinion, if you have questions, is the comment section. I hopefully will be able to answer that. And other, and if I can't, obviously a fan could. And then you'll obviously have my Discord server, which if you do join a Discord server, you must be 13 years or older lawfully in order to join. I'm saying that, not I, I am biased. This is my own Discord server that I own. I'm obviously biased. <laughs> I'm going to admit that. I am very biased. But there's obviously the people in my server, and you can ask there, and then hopefully somebody will respond to you kind of quick. Now, one thing that you might be concerned with and you might see pretty often is you get multiple people answering, which is good, but then debates happen. You're going to feel bad for it, but that's going to be helpful. 
because this community is very defensive. They're going to go ahead and go tooth and nail explaining why that their option is the best. And from doing so, you're able to get a better idea of what that tower is like. And then you can use that debate to help you make a decision. So if anything, whenever an argument comes up, it's actually insanely useful. And so, well, that's all I have to say. Farewell to you. I'm going to go ahead and break down what you should do. If you are somebody who just wants to progress further down in World 1, then feel free to go ahead and start going ahead and trying to unlock Ring 6 and further. If you're somebody that wants to start off something new, feel free to go ahead and check out the zones. But if you're somebody who is looking to increase your skill level, try to do your first intense tower. Even though you've only done a baseline challenging, remember you have access to practice, so you can practice towers and get them down, which will make the grinding process way easier. And obviously, if you find a cosmetic you like, go ahead and try some monthly challenges. Just be in, you can just be very careful with some of them, because these can get a little bit rude and a little bit difficult. And well, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching this beginner's guide. I hope I am able to help you be able to transition out of this beginner's guide. If you have any questions or any worries, feel free to ask them in the comments or join my Discord server and go ahead and go in there. And uh, also, there's a lot of different links I need to put in the description for this beginner's guide, so do be aware of that. If there's something that is missing, please let me know and I will add it. So, right. Thank you all very much for the support. This video will remain open until this chart gets scrambled around and then it's gone. It will be closed to the pop book. Thank you all very much for the support of the beginner's guide. I hope this guide was helpful to you and got newer players to be able to make it here. I wish you all the best of luck. I hope you have fun having the ability to choose what you want to do and are excited for going down in the game and doing some harder and more modern towers. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your time here in JTO. See you later.